So I'm working on a project here where I have to copy terrain mods from one terrain into another. And so I'm going to show you the kind of legitimate way to do that and then a little bit of a hack. All right, so what I've got here is two terrains that have mods in them. Uh, this is really cool because both myself and my collaborator started with the same base terrain. Then my collaborator created mods on his machine, and then when he wanted to send me the mods, all he had to do was actually send me the new terrain. And so even though this has a three gigabyte TIFF file, the original terrain is this HGF5 file that points to it, and then the mods that my collaborator made are just clones of that that point to it. So as long as we have this base terrain on both of our machines, he can make as many changes as he wants to these clones, and then just send me the clone by email because it's a 36 kilobyte file. All right, so now I've got these on my machine. But what happened is that my collaborators actually created two sets of mods. One, there's kind of patches to the existing condition, and then the second is the proposed condition. And so the proposed condition is actually going to have the proposed and the existing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to bring mods between the these two features. Now, the first thing I do is save all of this because I'm going to actually make changes right to these mods instead of cloning them. The reason I'm going to do that is because every clone is sequential. They're all dependent. So every clone is dependent on everything that's been cloned from it. So I try not to daisy chain my clones too much. I try to just copy and paste and modify uh, you know, one or two clones removed from the original. And so in this case, I've copied all of this. And so I'm actually going to just go in and change the files themselves. And so what I want to do is I actually just want to bring these existing patches into the proposed structure. And so here I'll come in and you'll see that you know, I've got these existing modifications and I've got these proposed. And so if I come into existing, and open the attribute layer, I get all of these modifications that I actually have to add. And so, you know, one thing I like to do is if you just kind of go zoom to selected feature, it'll take you to that modification. And then if you want to copy it, you can just come here and say copy selected feature. Then you can go to the train you want to add it to. And in this case, probably what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another modification. Now you have to make sure this is the same type of modification. In this case, they're levees high ground. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to just call this existing because I'm going to put everything in there. So I'll say, okay, then you might be tempted to try to open existing and paste there, but you're actually going to do it right here for mapper. You'll right click on this and go down to paste features. And now you'll see that that feature is in there. And you can do this with multiple. You can come in here and go say, actually, you can say, I want to take a bunch of these, press shift, right click, copy. And then again, we're not actually going to go here because you can't actually paste them here. You're, you're just going to right click on this node and go to paste features. It'll grind a little bit. And now you'll see that they're in there. But one thing you'll notice if we kind of zoom to selected feature here is that not everything comes in. And so this is what the existing mod looks like that my collaborator gave me. But if I turn that off and look at what got copied, the thing that got copied doesn't actually have the elevation information. And so what it does, it just finds the high point here and the low point there and it interpolates. And so we actually have to go in and edit those. Don't worry, I'm showing you a hack in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have this selected and then I need to start editing. And then I can come and say, edit ground line modification. That's gonna open this editor. And we'll see that actually the whole thing is at 165.1. But if I come over here and I open it here, you can see that it's interpolating between the high and low point. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna and put that in here and here. And now we have the same feature. So if you're doing a few of them, that's cool. You can do that. But if you're doing a lot of them, um, I'm gonna show you a hack. What we're gonna do is we're going to not save that. 
we're going to go to the HDF5 files directly. Now, if you haven't spent much time with the HDF5 files, you know, editing these directly, we do not guarantee anything because uh, if you make a change to the base data and it doesn't load, uh, that's that's a problem. So you always copy these files. Don't ever work with files that you haven't copied. But in this case, I'm going to go in and you know edit these HDF5 files directly. And so what we've got is each terrain has an HDF file and a VRT file. All the mods are in the HDF file. Now the HDF file also points to this TIFF file. So each terrain actually has three files or more if you have more TIFFs. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this HDF5 file. Now if I click on, double click on it, an editor is just going to pop up. And that's because I've loaded HDF view on the machine. This is free software. It's a HDF viewer that allows you to view the output files that we have in RAS. I recommend having HDF view or some HDF viewer on your machine. It's free and it makes these sorts of things possible. And so what you see is we've opened this file and this file has, you know, it has a pointer to the terrain and then it has the mods. And under the mods, you'll see we have the proposed structure mod. And so then if I come in here, and I pull over the existing patch HDF, you'll see that again, we have the same pointer to the same train, but then we have different mods. So I'm gonna come in here and copy this, and then I'll come up here and paste it here. And now we have both the proposed and the existing structures. And so then if I come over here and Open Mapper. If we go and look at the mods associated with that, we have the proposed structures, but we also have the existing structures that include elevation and come in just the way they were given to me. And so those are a couple of ways to move mods between different terrain files, especially if you have mods in multiple terrain files that you want to consolidate into one. You can copy and paste them, or you can go in and edit the HDF5 file. My name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist on the HC RAS team, and this video was funded by the HHNC SET program.